Okay, so we've got our two sample slides prepped. There they are. And we have these nice light microscopes, and so we're going to uh, magnify so that we can see. So there's a whole process in doing this. You want to make sure that the microscope is on, and you want to start at the lowest magnification, which is. 4x, so this usually the shortest ocular, and um, you uh, let's put our slide on. Oops. Make sure that it holds it. Okay, and then um, I'm going to move the right there, like right towards the center. And um, the first thing that I do is I'm going to see if I can see, or I'm going to zoom in so that I start seeing some organisms. And so we use the course adjustment on 4X to do that. And during this process, you may also have to change the amount of light um, that's coming through the bottom of the slide. bunch of algae in the sky. Let me move it around and see if I can find this would be a great algae ID session. We use a different method to do that and we don't do that in this lab. Okay, so next I'm going to go to, I've got, what I've done is I've zoomed in so that I can see organisms and algae and uh, maybe we can <laughs> see if you can see anything through the oculars to see what I'm seeing. So it's not zoomed in enough for me to really ID what's in there. So, so you can see that there are some small pieces of organic matter that are in focus and that's what we're aiming for here. Usually you have to go all the way down on the thorax, but you start out with the ocular all the way up and the um, Higher magnification oculars are going to have a chance or a tendency to get close enough to the slide since the slide has depth and they can actually break the cover slip. So you need to be careful of that um, when you go to the 100x. Okay, so we're going to go to the, the 100x. Blue. Blue's, the blue is longer than yellow. And okay, so make sure it goes into place. And then we're going to use the fine adjustment. Uh, to uh, focus in, zoom in, and get some focus on organisms up a little bit closer, and hopefully you'll be able to see them a little bit better. Okay, I saw a Nauplia. So by the time you're going to see the, this procedure, you have, will have had a lecture. <laughs> Just destroyed that one. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you will have the lecture on zooplankton. And um, so you will know what copepods are, and uh, Noplia are the sort of the baby copepods. They go through six molts. And I was able, because not the copepods and Noplia are re reasonably large, I was able to see that that's what this was, even at 4x. And so at uh, 100x, and that is 10x here and 10x on the ocular, so that makes uh, this multiplier a multiplier 10 times 10. So you have 100x magnification in total. So what I've done is I've, uh, I only had to zoom in just a little bit to get a good magnification on Anoplia. So you can go ahead and see, you can see that there. That guy. Yeah, with, see with a little the legs and all, that's a, that's a Noclea. And we have an ID guide that we use to help us determine what these organisms are. And so in our ID guide, if you look here, uh, you see lots of different orientations of uh, Noclea. So 
full frontal. You can see all the legs, but in this case, sort of scrunched into the side. And, um, but I'm still seeing the, the little appendages um, that clearly distinguish him as a copepod mouthbed. Okay, so what I normally do is I, now that I've got good magnification, I do sort of a full view, go around the whole slide to see what's on here and whether I have you know, a reasonable number of organisms or whether I need to go back and uh, concentrate the sample more. I can tell you that this sample, even though it looked uh, like it had a lot in it, it's mostly algae. And so I would probably go back and uh, concentrate the sample a little bit more. Look at that. We always like showing our good specimens. So this is another uh, copepod noplia. You maybe see that one a little bit better. So I've gone around this slide and I'm not seeing a whole lot of zooplankton on it. I'm seeing a lot of uh, phytoplankton. And so I'll probably go back and uh, concentrate the sample I made. Uh, start with the original sample, uh, take another 200 milliliters, maybe concentrate, concentrate it down to 35 or 25 milliliters, and then I'll have enough organisms. Our, our goal is to have 100-ish on a slide, although we do normally do okay if we have 50 or less, as long as we have uh, three or four students processing a slide, and then we merge the, the slides and the total numbers together as one sample. So what I do next is I uh, use heavy, heavy use of my ID guides. I've got a few of them here and students pass them around and also a little bit of uh, my own personal knowledge or the instructor's personal knowledge about zooplankton ID. And then you start at, the, at one corner, whatever you're comfortable with of the slide. Okay, and then remember that when you turn the knobs one way, the slide moves the other way. <laughs> so it is a little disconcerting. And so basically what you do is you do a race track uh, ID and count. So you start in one corner and then you move over one field of view at a time or at least until you reach organisms um, trying not to overlap and you ID the organisms and you count them and you use a tally sheet kind of approach. So for example, we're seeing a lot of Nauplia. This is slide one. I would uh, actually, instead of using numbers, this is a uh, post sample, I would just do tally marks in order to count them. And you can use a sheet of paper for that. This is nice to have as your final input on a sample assessment where um, this individual has taken for this particular Brook Lake sample, this one um, uh, was at six meters. They've taken um, four slides that were processed and they've combined them into uh, one and they've just they just took the tally marks and converted that into numbers on here and so you basically go across the slide IDing and counting as you go until you've completed an entire slide and then that pretty much completes your processing of the sample in the lab and uh, you would then go back rinse everything off and hopefully you'll have time to do two or three of these in the lab the initial ones, there's a big learning curve on doing it, so they take longer. But once you figured out uh, the more dominant types of taxa that are in our samples, you can move through them pretty quickly and uh, process.